Welcome to this online presentation of the Hadoop Essentials tutorial. This is the Programming with Hive module. During this module, we will describe what Hive is, its characteristics, its uses and non-uses, its basic architecture, and how Hive compares to the PIG framework. We will describe the basic Hive query language features and how to access Hive from either the command line interface or Microsoft HD Insight. We will use the query language to define and manage Hive tables, as well as to query, join data, insert, and sort the data. So let's move on with Hive. Hive is a project of the Apache Hadoop project that provides a data warehousing layer built on top of Hadoop. Hive allows you to define a structure for your unstructured big data. It simplifies the process of performing analysis and queries by introducing a familiar SQL-like language called the Hive query language. Hive is intended for data analysts familiar with SQL who need to do ad hoc queries, summarization, and data analysis on their HDFS data. Hive is not a relational database. Hive does use a relational database to store its own metadata but the data that Hive processes is stored in the distributed file system. Hive is not designed for online transaction processing. Hive runs on Hadoop, which itself is a batch processing system where jobs can have high latency with substantial overhead. Therefore, latency for Hive queries is generally high, even for small jobs. Hive is not suited for real-time queries and row-level updates. Hive is best used for batch jobs over large sets of immutable data, such as web logs. The typical use case of Hive is to take large amounts of polystructured data and to place it into a structure and into a view that is comfortable to be used by the business analyst or the business analyst tools. Hive supports use cases such as ad hoc queries, summarization, and data analysis. The Hive query language can also be extended with custom scalar functions, or what are referred to as user-defined functions. The user-defined functions are further categorized by those user-defined functions which can take a number of rows in a table and produce a single row, or those functions which actually produce or populate a table. The Hive architecture consists of First, a metastore in which Hive stores its schema information, which provides a structure to store data. The Hive query language, which is for query processing, compiling, optimizing, and of course, those queries perhaps being turned into MapReduce jobs that are meant to go against the distributed file system. Hive can be approached by the user through a number of vehicles. Hive has a web user interface, it has its own command line interface, and of course, Hive can be accessed via HD Insight. PIG and Hive work well together and is indeed used together for many business uses. Hive is a good choice when you want to query data, when you need an answer to specific questions, and most important, when you are familiar with a SQL language to begin with. PIG is a good choice for ETL, or extract, transform, and load jobs. It's good for preparing data for easier analysis. It's also good when you have a long series of steps to perform to place your data into a form that is accessible to your analyst. So let's talk about the Hive query language. The Hive query language is similar to other forms of query languages. It uses familiar relational database concepts, such as tables, rows, columns, and schemas. It is based upon SQL 92 specification. The Hive query language supports multi-table inserts via a code API. Therefore, one can access big data via tables. It converts the Hive query language queries into MapReduce jobs. Therefore, the user of Hive does not need to know about MapReduce. It also supports plugging custom MapReduce scripts into queries. To get started with Hive, 
the user has to simply choose whether to use the command line interface or HD Insight, or the web user interface. This slide shows a sample of both the command line interface and the Microsoft HD Insight Hive console. When one works with a command line interface with Hive, one is presented with the Hive shell. The Hive shell can be used interactively or it can be provided a file of Hive query language commands. When using Hive with HD Insight, the user is further provided with a menu of those things that can be done through HD Insight. Note here we have done a simple help and note that what has been provided to us are the query operators, the query execution methods, the parameters, etc. We have spoken about Hive and storing its tables as metadata in a relational database repository. Let's further investigate what Hive tables are. A Hive table consists of data, which is typically a group or group of files in the distributed file system, and a schema. That schema is stored in the form of metadata and stored in the relational database of which we spoke. Therefore, data and schema are completely decoupled. A schema can be defined for existing data, Data can be added or removed independently, and Hive can point at existing data. You have to define a schema if you have existing data in the distributed file system that you want to use in Hive. This slide shows the user using the command line interface and the Hive query language to create a table called My Table. Note that in this case, each row is common delimited text and the Hive query language statements are always going to be terminated with a semicolon, regardless of whether you wish to use the command line interface or place these commands in a file and provide that file to the Hive interpreter. Using either the command line interface or the console from HD Insight, to manage tables is a very simple thing in Hive. Note that to see the current tables, one simply says show tables. Note to check a schema or basically to know what the schema contains, describe the table. Note that we can alter tables. We can alter by changing the table name, adding columns, removing columns, and adding partitions and dropping partitions. Now that we've set up a table, let's take a look at how we would use the Hive query language to actually access data via that table schema. To load data, use the load data command to import data into a Hive table. The files are not modified by Hive. They are loaded in as is. The use of the word overwrite will write over a file of the same name. Note that based upon the information in this simple command, we are using what is referred to as a Hive managed table. Therefore, the data will be stored in a very specific location of the distributed file system called the Hive Data Warehouse. The location of the data warehouse, or more specifically, the name of the data warehouse, is set by a property. Here, we will just simply use Hive slash warehouse. Hive can read all of the files in this particular directory. The schema is checked when the data is queried. So if a row does not match the schema, Hive will read it as null. Here are further examples of using HQL to load data. Note, we can load data from the local file system. That is what the word local is used for. Note, we can load data from a path object. And we can also insert data into a table by selecting information from the table. So note, insert into birthdays Select first name, last name, birthday from customers where birthday is not null. The HQL insert statement is used to populate data into a table from another Hive table. Since query results are usually large, it is best to use an insert clause to tell Hive where to store your query. In this example, we're creating a table and inserting data into it. 
Insert Overwrite is used to replace data in the table. Otherwise, the data will be appended to the table. The append happens by adding files to the directory holding the table data. You can write a directory in the distributed file system as well as you can write to a local directory. Performing queries in Hive is simple using the Hive query language. Note the Hive query language supports select. You see here an example of a simple query, select star from my table. But select also supports the following, the where clause, union all, distinct, group by, having, and the limit clause, which will limit the number of rows returned when you have a large amount of data. You can also use regular expressions for the column specifications. Here is an example of a complete Hive query. We'll come back to this query, but note this is a fairly complicated query, but again, it consists of simple Hive query language commands. The Hive query language supports subqueries, but only in the from clause. For example, select total from, and then the subquery. Please note the subquery must have a name. The columns in the subquery select list are available in the outer query. The HQL command join is for inner joins. Inner joins are the intersection of the two tables. Note it returns rows they have in common. The Hive query language also has the notion of an outer join. Outer joins allow for the finding of rows with non-matches in the tables being joined. Three types of outer joins are supported. Left outer join, right outer join, and full outer join. Hive query language supports two commands for sorting. Order by sorts but sets the number of reducers to one. Note we want to remind you that you are indeed running MapReduce jobs on a Hive query. Sort by will use multiple reducers with a sorted file from each. Hive works with Hadoop to allow you to query and manage large-scale data using a familiar SQL-like interface. Hive provides a command line interface as well as now Microsoft HD Insight provides console access to Hive. Hive tables consist of data and schema. Data and schema are separated for maximum flexibility. The Hive query language supports familiar SQL operations including joins, subqueries, order by, sort by, and so on. We would like you to take a look at the tutorial we provide you. This is a tutorial overview using Hive. What we would like you to do is to first load your files into the distributed file system. We are going to load two files. We are going to load two comma limited files, one holding baseball statistics called batting.csv and one providing ancillary information called master CSV. Then we're going to ask you to create a table called temp batting. Remember, when you create a table in Hive, you are creating a schema. It is associated with no data. Then we want you to associate data with this table by loading the data file batting CSV into the table temp batting. Once the table is loaded, we can perform Hive query language operations on the table. So let's extract the data to find the player with the highest runs for the year between 1871 and 2011. We're also going to ask you to extend the script to translate the player ID field into first and last names of the players. So taking a look at what we were asking you to do in sort of a linear fashion, the first thing we need to do is to use the Hive query language to create the table. We've asked you to create the table called temp batting. We've asked you to populate the table. And so therefore, we're going to load the data 
user sandbox batting CSV and we're going to overwrite into table temp batting. Now we want to extract the data so we can work with it. When we extract this data, we will create a new table with three columns for player ID, year, and the number of runs. Note, create table batting with the schema of player ID being a string, year being an integer, and runs being an integer. Now we want to extract the desired data from temp batting and copy it into batting. The first line of the query you see in the yellow box creates the table batting. The three regular expression extract calls are used to extract the player ID, year, and run fields from the table temp batting. Now we want to group the data by year, so let's perform a select with year, max runs, from batting, and then group by year. The next thing we need to do is to get the player ID. So let's select year, player ID, and runs from batting, and join that with a subselect of year, max runs, from the batting, but grouped by year. And that is the criteria we're going to use is that A year equals B year, and A run equal B runs. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you, and please visit our other tutorials about Hadoop Essentials.